The Body Island Lighthouse stands as a testament to maritime engineering, resilience, and national legacy. Its history encapsulates not only the transformation of navigational aids, but also America's relentless pursuit of overcoming natural and human-made adversities to ensure a safer transit for ships near the perilous waters known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. The creation of the Body Island Lighthouse was necessitated by the hazardous sailing conditions around Cape Hatteras. It was Lt. Napoleon L. Cost who, after rigorous exploration of the coastline in 1837, identified the significant need for an additional lighthouse in the vicinity. His recommendation was empathetic, noting that Body Island was the site where more vessels are lost than on any other part of our coast. Congress took action by appropriating funds, although bureaucratic hurdles and land acquisition complications postponed construction for a decade. The first lighthouse, initiated in 1847, was marred by tragic oversight. Despite the expert engineering guidance from Francis Gibbons, Thomas Blount, a former customs official bereft of any lighthouse construction experience, took the helm. He blatantly ignored Gibbons' suggestions, laying an unsupported brick foundation that sealed the tower's fate. By 1859, the 54-foot structure was leaning ominously, rendering it both unusable and unsafe. Remarkably, the second lighthouse faced an entirely different but equally devastating fate, destruction at the hands of retreating Confederate forces during the Civil War. Despite the successful completion of the 80-foot tower in 1859, it stood for barely two years before it was obliterated to prevent potential use by Union troops. The coast near Body Island remained dark for several years, as debates swirled around the need and feasibility of a replacement. After numerous petitions from concerned ship captains, the Lighthouse Board gave the green light for the construction of a third tower. Built north of the original site, the new lighthouse emerged as a state-of-the-art marvel, employing top-notch materials and utilizing an advanced Fresnel lens. It commenced operations on October 1, 1872. The towering brick lighthouse was complemented by several outbuildings, including a detached keeper's residence. Though it was isolated, receiving few visitors, the keeper's residence was finished out with quality materials ensuring a comfortable and refined home for the keeper while off the clock. Directly behind the house, and perfectly centered on it, the brick lighthouse rose 156 feet. To begin his work, the keeper would exit through the back door and walk straight towards the oil house. This folk Victorian structure was joined to the base of the lighthouse itself, but what lies beyond its doors might surprise you. Entering the oil house, a checkered hallway leads us towards the tower. But before we begin our ascent, let's turn around to find two small rooms on either side of the entrance hall. To one side is a comfortable sitting area, with tall ceilings and a large fireplace flanked by windows. To the other side, the oil room is where the keeper would fetch more oil to keep the light burning at night. He would gather as many containers of oil as he could and begin making his way up the 214 steps. At the interior base of the tower, he would circulate about the weight well to find the wrought iron staircase spiraling overhead. With his hands full, he could rest at each stair landing before continuing up another flight of stairs, slowly making his way towards the top of the lighthouse. And along the way, he could crack the windows to enjoy the cooling effect of the ocean's breeze. Finally, he would arrive at the top of the lighthouse and step behind the Fresnel lens. Here he could change out the oil and ensure that it would burn all night. From a social perspective, Lighthouse keeping was an isolated and challenging occupation, particularly for the keeper's families. Advances in transport and technology gradually alleviated these concerns. By 1932, the lighthouse was electrified, negating the need for on-site keepers. The subsequent transfer of the light station's property, except the tower, to the National Park Service in 1953 marked a new chapter. The keeper's quarters have undergone historic restorations and now serve as a ranger's office and visitor center, while the lighthouse itself remains an operational navigational aid and a cherished historic site, as one of only a dozen remaining brick lighthouses in the United States. This video is a fan suggestion, 
If you have a suggestion or recommendation for a house that you would like to see on this channel, let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.